So two weeks ago, I went to the Department of Energy in Washington, D.C. to testify to the Natural Gas Subcommittee. And I went with two questions for Dr. Deutsch, the chair of the subcommittee, and to remind him of the precautionary principle, which I don't need to remind any of you about. You all know that. But I thought I needed to remind him. But before I asked my questions, I pointed to my pocket over my heart, telling him my wife Lucinda had wanted to stand with me, but couldn't. Because at that moment, she was lying in a hospital bed in Concord, Massachusetts, stricken with stage four lung cancer. I carried the cell phone in case her sister might call me and tell me to come to Concord right away. And I looked at Dr. Deutsch very clearly and I said that Lucinda's cancer, and perhaps the cancer that killed my first wife, Claire Marie Carmody, could very likely have resulted from industrial pollutants that government panels like this one had allowed to taint our water and air in a quest for cheap energy. Then in the name of my wife, Lucinda, I asked my questions. Is there irrefutable scientific consensus that this activity cannot cause irreparable harm to the environment? And are you on this panel willing to consider halting it? Those are my questions. You know what he told me? He said, we don't answer questions. We just take comments. I pressed him to no avail. I told him not to allow this activity that would surely consign many thousands more people to the hell Lucinda was experiencing at that moment while I was looking into his eyes. But it was to no avail. We don't answer questions, is what he told me. That's not democracy. One week ago, lying beside me in bed, Lucinda died. And today, instead of a cell phone above my heart, I carry a pinch of Lucinda's ashes in my pocket. The rest are in a truck over on East Hanover Street as I'm still journeying home to where these ashes will become a part of the labor of love that is our farm. She wouldn't mind that I bring her to you like this. She was at heart a scientist, understanding that our bodies are over 60% water, and that above all else, gas drilling threatens to poison our water. So I bring them and her to you today, and in her name, I'm in here, here in Trenton to tell our governments, all our governments, if you won't answer our questions, then we've got answers for you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, know, you know this drilling is not safe. You know, you know this drilling. And you don't have any intention of halting it in the state of Pennsylvania or West Virginia or Texas or 30 other states right now, do you? And, I, and because you have no intention of doing that, family after family must endure the grievous suffering of their loved ones as I have just suffered the loss of Lucinda. So I want to tell all you governments, if you don't stop it, we will. Come near my farm. Gas companies, you hear it? Yeah. Don't you dare come near my farm. And stay the hell away from my neighbor's farm, too. Yeah. yeah. I have a power in my soul now. That's right. To enforce a moratorium of one if I have to. Yeah. If I have to. Because yeah. look at this. Be there. We are building a mighty movement to yeah. stop you. Yeah. In that movement now, and forever shall be, Dr. Lucinda Hart Gonzalez. She was fluent in Spanish. In Spanish, they have a tradition of calling the dead to be with you here in this life by saying their name and responding presente. So if you will, please, for me.
three times. When I say her name, please say present day. Dr. Lucinda Hart Gonzalez. Dr. Lucinda Hart Gonzalez. Dr. Lucinda Hart Gonzalez. Thank you very much.